That's why the Bible says, I will bless what you do. I will bless the work of your hands. God works with commitment. That's why before you put your hands into something, find out in your heart, is this what you want to do? That's why the Bible gives us the principle of a farmer. You must be able to sow seed. Before you sow seed, you must be able to identify the ground. You must appreciate and press and love the place. You must till the ground. You must sow seed. You must be patient. Dress it. You must make sure you water and patiently wait. God blesses what we are committed to. If your heart is not in it, God cannot prosper anything against your will and commitment. And commitment is tested by three things. Number one, commitment is tested by time. Commitment is tested by time. You can never be committed if your time cannot match your convictions. You must be able to stick to a course in a manner that time moves, but your conviction remains. God does not bless what you are planning to leave. That's why exit doors is an enemy to progress. Options are enemies to progress. Having an exit window delays your progress. Because a human being is designed in a manner that they cannot be sold into two things at the same time. And the Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all that they do. And such person should not, cannot, will not, and they shouldn't expect anything from the Lord. Amen. God works with your commitment. That's why God will always place your blessings within the distance of your vision, the distance of your walk, and the distance of your reach. God works with Commitment. The distance between the crossing of the Jordan, I mean the Red Sea, to the promised land is called the distance of commitment. Amen. Amen. Commitment. Naishara ya kwanza ya commitment ni wakati. Umbali kutoka mahalu lipo mbaka mahalu na potarajiwa inaitwa the distance of commitment. The distance between the crossing and entry is called a distance of commitment, a commitment distance. Now, listen to me, friends. I, I, I love watching these this, this songs by um, Bill Gator and the Homecoming Friends. And uh, some of you might have seen Bill Gator of late, and you, you, you love the music. But when you look at where the man began, he's now 90-something years, or 89 or 90, he began singing at age 15. When nobody wanted to listen to him, they used to go to nursing homes and sing to old people just to encourage them to live longer. Amen. Let me give you a homework. Look at anything that rises very fast. They collapse as fast as it rose. Amen. Whether it is musicians, and, and I'm sorry to say that, look at the way a musician gets a hit song. And as soon as you can tell, it's gone. Look at, I don't want to use church. Let me use you because I want to protect your side. Look at anything that rises too fast. Look at these relationships that are instant. Look at this friendship that has no basis. And then we want to cut them with you are my covenant brother. And by the way, when somebody tells you you're my covenant brother, my covenant sister, tell them Judah said the same statement. Time is a test of commitment. Time is a test of commitment. You must be so convinced of something that if everybody left, you remain. Amen. By the way, the success of your pursuit is when people leave. Amen. Let me tell you something. Some of you think your business is not doing well. No, it is God allowing the wrong people to leave so that you remain the only one in that business. Commitment is tested by time. How long a 
have you been on a course? How long have you been in a relationship? And when I talk about relationship, I'm not talking about boyfriend, girlfriend. I'm talking about relationships. Because the other one is not. A true relationship has no purpose. Marriage has purpose. You are actually coerced. You are forced to stay together. By the laws of the land and the Bible. And you are told until death. And make sure you are not the cause of death. <laughs> True relationship has no purpose. Amen. Kama unapenda mtu na muko na usiano, rafiki na mtu, enyaina makaratasi, ni ndugu yako ndugu, munapenda na pila sababu. Actually, they say, watu wa suri, wa real friends, wanakuanga na wakati mwingi, isiokuwa na sababu. Ushona le mtu munatoka hapa, munasafiri na embaka na kuru, na kuru inakuwa kama mumefika jeptiret, Munafika haraka na mukiuli sana muliongea nini? Hakuna. Alafu munarudi tena muna realize mumefika mapema kabla mujamalisa kuongea. Kenyo mulikuwa munaongea ambaye haiko. Munaongea tutu vitu, tutu vitu, tutu vitu. Iyo sasa ni usiana. Unaona ile mtu unapigia simu wa subuhi saa kumina mbila muambi. Hey, nakuja kwa kwa breakfast. For no reason. Uyo ni rafiki. Lakini wale muna panga miezi tatu. I am coming. Imebaki siku tatu. Imebaki siku nane. Ndiya ombe mas, masufuria. Aombe viketi. Aombe masahani. Listen. You test commitment with time. Amen. How committed are you to that cause? In the pastoral setup we are told as a pastor. You test sonship with time. Listen. In the pastoral setup, now that is where I am, never hand a mantle to anybody who has not passed the test of time. Angalia kwa Biblia, mantles were handed over to people who stuck until the carrier of the mantle left. Amen. Inheritance were given when fathers die. So sons are those who held on until the father exceeded. Amen. Time is a test of commitment. Number two, challenges are a test of commitment. When you have every reason to break, when you have every reason to quit, when you have every reason to give up, and you still say this thing will work, when there's still this voice that says, hold on, maybe something will happen tomorrow, you're in commitment. Opposition challenges is a test of commitment. Number three, commitment is, is tested by what we call bruning, testing, rebukes, corrections. You can tell how committed you are to someone by how you take corrections. If you take offense on a correction, you are not committed. But let's allow start and move to the next thing on why I want us to build on commitment as a principle. If you look at commitment, you look at Joshua, you look at Elisha, you look at David, you look at the apostles, you look at Abraham, you look at Moses, you look at Noah building an ark for 120 years. Abraham waiting for 100 years. Joshua pursuing and fulfilling the principle of commitment with, with, uh, with Moses. Look at Elisha, look at Timothy, look at the apostles. Commitment is key. Are you with me? Yes. Look for a good leader in this world. And I will show you a man who's been committed to a cause. Amen. Can I ask you a question? Where can you dress your commitment? <coughs> if you are to be given grades on commitment, where have you been committed to? Now listen, commitment is not staying there. Commitment is making sure you are where you are staying. Because prisoners are not committed to prison. They are forced to stay in prison. Amen. Commitment is when all doors are open, but you choose to stick. Amen. So commitment is not presence. Commitment is involvement. Yes. When Peter said to Jesus, where shall we go? He was on an exam room. Having said that then, Commitment must be married to what I'm introducing today on what I call tailored 
anointing. Tailored anointing. It may look like a word that needs explanation. Tailored anointing simply means this. Luke chapter 4, verses 18. Let me begin that and explain some few things that I think are important to all of us. Number one, just before I read that, I want you to know that there is what we call the general anointing. There is what we call corporate anointing. And there is what we call specific anointing. There's what we call general anointing. There's what we call corporate anointing. And then there's what we call specific anointing. I want to address the specific anointing. Why there were several diverse anointings in the Bible? Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Would you help me read together? The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Why? Because he has anointed me. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Everybody. Bruised, crushed. And verses 19, everybody louder. Now look at me and I want you to write down these five things. Number one, you are here for a purpose and not just purpose. Specific purpose. And that purpose is divinely governed by an anointing. There is an anointing that is tailored for a specific purpose that only works within that purpose through you, who is the administrator of that purpose. While all of us, if you're a father or a mama, can have children, but there is an anointing to bring forth a Moses. While Moses is among children, while Moses is born of a woman like any other boy, while Moses is born of a father like any other child, but Moses is a specific species that is born for a time as then. There was a specific tailored purpose for Moses. Now listen, friends. We have a general purpose in life which attracts general anointing. For example, to grow and go to school and be able to get a job or do business and then take care of your family, you know, take care of your brother, you know, build a house. That's so general. Anybody can do that. Whether you are a doctor or a lawyer or an engineer or a tailor or a or a, horror or, or a sweeper or, or, or you're doing, you are a house help, you can still pay rent, you can still take your children to school, you can have children, you can feed your children. It's so general, it's so common, it is what gives us existence here on earth. But there is a specific purpose that is tailored for a specific person, tailored for a specific time, for a specific people for a specific reason that is in God. Amen. Now listen, the challenge we have in our society is that most people operate in what we call general anointing. Some people have stepped a little bit into what we call corporate anointing. Very few people have found what we call specific anointing that is tailored for your specific assignment. That's why you still hear people in a church congregation. Because they have never found their specific assignment in a congregation. They are, I mean, God called them into that church. But because they are in the general anointing, some have partially ended into what we call corporate anointing. They participate here and there. But the majority of the people, they are in the church. But they still have a mindset that the church belongs to the pastor and his family. 
So you hear a member of a church akiambia pastor wake, hii kanisa yako. Nani mshirika wako? Because they have not signed up for specific tailored anointing why you are at the place like this. Listen, Esther. Esther is told by Mordecai. Listen girl, there is a general anointing where every woman wants to get married. Let me call it papa so that it, it, it looks a bit reasonable. There is a general purpose where every woman desires to be loved and be married and have children. It is building a woman to be loved, to be married, to have babies and propagate life. It's in the heart of a woman. But listen, Esther, while that is true of you, I want you to know there is a corporate anointing purpose. You are here for a bigger picture. You represent a nation. You represent a generation. And if you do nothing, a generation will be lost unless God has to raise someone else. L let me tell you something. L look at me. There's nothing as painful as seeing someone do what you knew you were called to do. There's nothing as painful kama kuona mtu amefanya ile kitu kwa moyo wako ulijua. Hii ni yangu. Ni uchungu. Ni uchungu ni kama tukwenda harusi na umekuja na neti yako alafu unakuta harusi imeisha. Mnafikiri hiyo ni akaya? I have handled a case like that in this town. In this town. In our former lunch hour. Mwanaume amemwambia mwanamke nakuoa. Mwezi ujao tunakuja engagement. One week. Msichana ameenda kujiandaa. Kijana anaandaa harusi. Siku ya engagement ndio ilikuwa siku ya harusi. Wamepika machakula huko kwao, wakingojea watu, huku chakula inakulwa. Na unajua nani aliolewa? Girlfriend wake, mwenye walikuwa napanga na yeye harusi. Chunga. Judas ni ule mnakula kwa kikombe moja. Sikia, ukiwa na maadui kumi, huko afadhali kulikuwa na marafiki wawili. Because maadui watakuonyesha life. You need more enemies than friends. Angalia jirani yako today look suspicious. Ukiona anaangalia straight mbele hataki uone sura yake. Listen. Esther, as much as you will enjoy being a woman and a wife and a mother, anybody can do that. Listen Esther, Vashti was the same. She was where you are. So if you go in and just become another woman like Vashti, it's not news. There was another woman before you. Amen. If you go there and just think about you and your family, you are doing corporate, but you are not understanding more. But listen, Esther, who knows why you are there Amen. at that time as this? There is something called specific purpose that is tailored to a specific anointing. Amen. And that's what I want to address for the moment will be for you to understand what is the tailored anointing for your specific purpose. Amen. Otherwise, utakimbia kwa imaisha na corporate purpose, na general purpose, and you discover in life, you do everything that doesn't satisfy. And let me give you a hint. While you are doing corporate purpose or general purpose, you realize as much as you make money and you seem to be doing well and you are dressed well, there is something in your spirit that is never satisfied. When you come ule mutu ambaya kona kiu ya maji lakini akapewa soda baridi. Unasikia ni baridi meja kwa tumbo lakini kiu aishi. Watu ingine wanafurai wakufangu wa mpia wanafurai kufanya arusi, wanafurai kuchenga kanisa, wanafurai kufanya hii. Lakini ndani yako, usha wana vile unaeza nunua nguo kwa sababu watu wana nunua iko kwa version. Alafu unaenda kuweka kwa wardrobe, unakamu waka moja pila kufa. Muna lewa fitu minasema, usha waifanya kitu, usha nunua gari alafu kashangai, hii gari nilikuwa nanua nini? Nyi mmetoka wabi? Have you ever done things when people are doing it, and then you wonder how you got into it? Talk to me. You remain hungry while everybody celebrates you. You know, I spoke to some people one day and they say, I mean, that was a, a, that some, some girls who are married, 
you know, some girls who are married. So the, one of them was like, Unajua nini pastor? Unajua, unajua hii, hii nyumba yetu hii, unajua people admire us. Ati mina drive gari yangu na mume wangu na drive yake, yeah, na drive yake, mina drive yangu. Na kila mchana anangalia pale na wala ambaya hawana hiyo gari. Wana hee, hawa mebarikiwa. Imagine mama na drive, na mse ana drive. Na, 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 na. Mbaka chumapili, kila mtu ana drive yake kuenda kanisa. Hee, watu anatamani, I wish atamini pate mse kama huyo. Mchana kaniambia, eh, eh, siyo kubarikiwa. We are avoiding each other. <laughs> Ale niambia tukienda na huyu mbaba na karimoja. And I confirmed there was a time I was speaking in Nanyuki. I went to Nanyuki to preach. Nikiwa na gari yangu ya kwanza. Na mnajua gari ya kwanza ni kama mungu. You idolize it. So nimetoka kubiri lunch hour naenda kwa hotel. I think I was being taken somewhere for lunch. And then kwa bumps, I reduced the speed. I love nikasikia nyuma, boom. Kukuta ndani ni Nissan, private Nissan. Mbaba na mama wako ndani. Wanatoka inje. Hawaoni wamekonga gari yangu. Wameshuka na bado wanakombana. Na gari yangu imekongwa, my friend. <laughs> Mutu wakasema, ukiona watu wawili, wa, mwanamuke na mwanaume wako karimoja, na wanaongea wanapiga story, ni mapeste. Ukiona wamenyamasa, ni muke na mume. Ata sahi hapa, you know, ata kanisa. You know, watu wanaingianga kanisa, muke anaenda south, husband anaenda north. <laughs> na wanakikisha wasikai mali wanaonana. You know, one lady alisema, ati walienda kanisa na mume wake. Haka sikia, haki inua mikona sema, oh Lord, I love you. Haka fungua maja, nisema, hey, kumbe unasema yu neno, I love you. Haka ambia mungu, Lord, if this one loves you, I don't love you. You know. <laughs> there is what we call tailored anointing. Can I ask you a question? Do you know your anointing? Do you know your anointing? Do you know your kind of anointing? Because if you understood your anointing, you will no longer have competition, you will no longer be dry, you will no longer have contentions, because the anointing gives you a free highway. Amen. Are you with me? Jana tikuwa kanisani, I just mentioned something and I said, uh, Sasa, mutu mwenye, uh, no, I think it was our first service here. Our, we, we normally have a first service from 6 to, to 8.30 here. So I was telling them, sasa mtu mwenye anauza chenesa akisema kasi iko chini. Anamanisha aje mungu tunaomba pariki kasi ya mikono yetu, you know. Unandelea aje kasi iko chini sana. Tunaomba mungu wafungue kasi. So somebody heard about it. So yesterday, <laughs> yesterday after service, we decided to walk with the brother. So to cut, uh, nika kuja, no, I, I walked from church. I was walking to see somebody in Eldoret Hospital. So I decided to walk. So I walked, I walked around four. So across the bridge, I meet this brother, actually a man of God. So to kapita kuna, kuna kapath. Iko hapo kifuka muto, unapita hivi. Samwe katikati hapo, nani chuma pili saa kumi? Nika siya, hey, Pastor Pitok, a lady was sitting here. Pastor Pitok, kuna endele aja mzuri, salama ya. Kuangalia hivi, miandiko Sandy Paul something, na kuna vitu, 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 vitu. <laughs> this is where the story is. So, alipo malisana na mimi, akarudia uyu mbaba, kamambia, abari yako customer. Uyu mbaba alishusha. Wacha kunita customer, wacha kunisalamia, unijui. Ili kwa kesi. Whatever that means. Your story litoka wapi? You need to know you are anointing. Nika mambia ukufi, customer ni jina ya, you know, Alikata salamu, haku msalamia, unijui. Wacha kunisalamia. The anointing is tailored for a specific purpose. Listen, until you find your specific anointing, you will struggle. And the danger to this is, you are struggling while your environment is succeeding. Everybody about around you is testifying. They are happy, they say things, and things happen. They sing the same songs and God moves. You sing the same songs with a higher volume and nothing moves. They look so casual, but they look so easy. Because the anointing is what gives you space. So Jesus said this. Let me close by saying this. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me. And then he specifically said, what he was anointed for. Amen. The anointing was not general. It was specific. So my job is cut out. I am anointed for this. 
You remember at some point somebody said, hey, we want you to judge between me and my brother. Mambo ya shamba. Ndugu yangu wamekata na mali tukawe. Yesu utusaidie tukawe mali. Yesu wakamambia, it is not within my calling. Who made me a judge before you? Yesu wakamambia mambo ya kesi, sio yangu. Somebody said something that shocked me one day. I, I thought I was, wow, that was something. And the reason why John the Baptist was killed and Jesus did nothing is because he went away from his anointing. John the Baptist was anointed and called to usher in as a, a forerunner for the Messiah. Amen. But he decided to do counseling ministry. So he went for Herod for taking his brother's something, wife. He was not cut for that anointing. And guess what? Herod killed him. Listen, what you are not anointed for can frustrate you. What are you anointed for? Why are you crying from January to January? Why is it that everything you touch goes down? Why is it that you are the only one complaining? Why is it that you are the only one remaining behind? Could it be you are coping something? Could it be that you, you are emulating something but you've not found out? What is the tailored anointing for you? Now listen, the grace for results is in your specific tailored anointing. Yes. I am glad I found where my anointing is. That's why I don't struggle preaching. I don't struggle to preach. Why? I found it. I preach anyhow. I can preach for three hours. I can preach for six hours. I can preach for ten minutes. I can preach for three minutes. I can smile and still preach. I don't have to dress like a preacher. I am one. Even when I say nothing, I'm still one. Amen. I look like it. Amen. I smell like it. Amen. If I came to your house, I eat like a preacher. Amen. What are you tailored for? Listen, your authority is in your tailored anointing. Listen, 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 listen to this, and, and, then, and, and then I'll stop there. Look at, um, we'll pick from there next time. 26, Matthew, Matthew 26, 12. Matthew 26, 12. Matthew 26, 12. Tailored anointing. There is a specific anointing for a specific assignment, and you need to find out what is your anointing. Are you with me? The Bible talks about Jesus, about to be arrested, betrayed, of course, by Judas. And then he's invited to somebody's house for lunch. Against culture, against all odds, women were never allowed to attend such forum. But here comes a woman, and not just a woman, a woman that was considered to be a dirty woman. She, she was called an evil woman. She was actually a prostitute. Her name was Mary. She came with an alabaster box. Now listen, an alabaster box was not a good oil. It was an, a perfume for prostitutes. Even when you are looking, singing about the alabaster box, it was not a good oil. Ilikuwa marashi ya makaba. She came with the tools of thread. And the Bible says, without an invitation, she sneaked into a home. Against culture, you are blessed girls. Against culture. And she broke the oil and anointed Jesus. Now listen, there was contention in the atmosphere because religion and culture and protocol did not approve of her presence, leave alone her actions. But Jesus was like, hold on. She's done the right thing. As much as in look for, I said, I am anointed for a cause. There is this anointing specifically for a given assignment that is at the door. Amen. In pouring this perfume on my body, she has done something to prepare me for my burial. Listen, my host, you invited me for a meal. But this woman has a specific given assignment 
This anointing is for my burial. Amen. That if Jesus missed on that anointing, he will not have resurrected. Now, it, it may look very simple. Amen. But listen, if Jesus had not been anointed to fulfill that protocol, his body would have decayed in the grave. Tailored anointing. Listen, your uniqueness is in the anointing that is tailored for your specific purpose. To kiela wa hii mambo ya competition sijui nani anabariki nani Mungu anabariki nani Mungu anainua nani nani ameringa kwa sababu Mungu amempea gari sijui nani ameganganya hiyo vitu yote haina wakati kwa sababu kila mtu amekuwa tailored for a specific assignment na ukijua hiyo kitu unaishi maisha yako kwa sababu ukipewa taji pinguni utapewa against your purpose not against your competitors and by the way we have no competition competition is a school of people who drop out of class You can't burn a dormitory because you can't understand books. No, it won't change. You will say, Jirani, what are you tailored for? <laughs> that determines your anointing. Listen, friends, it doesn't matter who you admire, what you admire. Until you find you, you will always be a slave to those that you admire. You, any man of God can lay hands on you. The anointing will only take the, the laying of hands will only take the form of your calling. Amen. I cannot transfer my calling to you, Amen. but I can transfer the anointing. But the anointing will not be my anointing. It will be tailored to your specific calling. Amen. But you need to know what it is. Yes. Are you tailored to kill a lion? Lift your right hand. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you. I love every breath that I Lord, I pray for every person who is hearing this voice and those who are hearing from a distance. That by the end of these instructions, we will know where our specific tailored purpose with the assignment of the anointing is found. May we find us so that we can fulfill who we are in this life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's appreciate the Lord. I want you to be consistent on this because I, I really want, if you can find you, God can take you anywhere. Amen. God will always assign you to where you found. Please be consistent in this lunch hour. Invite a friend, tell those who are not aware that we are back, that we are back here. And uh, we pray that something good will happen. I feel in my spirit somebody's life will be done with the past and something new will be born. Somebody will know about you. There will be an announcement somewhere about you Amen. that cannot be hidden Amen. because the anointing makes you visible. Amen. Amen. Let's worship the Lord with our giving today. Amen. The Lord has been good to us. Yes, I want you to get an offering for the faithfulness of the Lord. I want you to thank God. If you need an envelope for the last two weeks, the, God, the Lord has been good to you. I want you to get a Thanksgiving offering. We've had a wonderful election, peaceful one. I want every Kenyan who prayed to give a Thanksgiving offering. Yes, I want you to thank God. Join us. Be a priest to our nation. Don't let us pray while you are not. You are a beneficiary of what we have enjoyed. Amen? So I want everybody who prayed for peaceful election, you voted. Within this week, I want you to get a Thanksgiving offering. And don't tell me who won, who lost. I'm talking about you voted, we prayed, and God answered our prayer. Every believer who believed that God gave us peace, as a, a custodian of the grace of God in this nation, as a beneficiary of what God has done, join us together. Let's bring together Thanksgiving. So in the course of the week, this week, get a Thanksgiving offering for the peace God gave us and the breakthrough that we have as we come back. Hallelujah.
you have your offerings with you you can use your phone if you're doing pay bill if it is your thanksgiving make sure you specifically say this is my thanksgiving lord we are blessed we thank you even with the giving our giving is not money it is a specific expression of our hearts it represents the god of our thanksgiving there is something in our giving that represents what our heart says about you i pray that you receive our hearts wrapped up in our gift and may it always reflect the aroma of our hearts may they be acceptable before you lord and as we go out of this place we go with the aroma of your presence and as we come back tomorrow we are blessed again and our lives are blessed like we've declared the week is blessed we are blessed in jesus name and blessed people say amen. amen very important announcement this evening we have prayers it's open for everybody it's a wonderful time of prayer between